question, why would we have black Americans? Chastising another black man for saying we deserve a hate crime bill for us. I think it's because if they start saying that black people are have been uniquely the recipients of hate, that we need to create a bill just for black Americans, that that would bolster the claims for reparations. And they don't want to do that. Tyrese Gibson, who just recently uh, put out a new movie called 92. But that's not what I'm going to talk about tonight. Tonight, I'm going to talk about his conversation with lawyer Benjamin Crump. How, what was the size of Dr. Martin Luther King's rims? And they talked about the Asian hate crime bill. Here we go. I would love one day to put some new things and boundaries in place pertaining to, pertaining to the, the, the police and black and brown culture. I mean, the moment that President Biden became the president, president, he signed it into law to protect the Asian community. What is that law that 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 he signed? Anti-Asian uh, hate crime bill. Anti-Asian uh, hate crime bill. President Biden and Kamala Harris signed an Asian hate crime bill, which makes it beyond illegal to ever purposely and maliciously do anything to anybody in the Asian community. And there was a spike in crimes and criminal behavior in and around COVID, allegedly and specifically motivated by Trump. And so everybody started treating Asians, beating them, killing them, shooting them, stabbing them, hurting them. And then he gets into the White House, skips over every black and brown Mexican and Latino that have been getting killed like flies, and he makes it a law. Asian hate crime bill is signed into law. So rather you're a police officer or a regular civilian, if you wake up on a Wednesday and say, he's Asian, a woman or a man, let's go do something bad to them which God forbid would ever happen again, but it is a crime bill that was signed into law that protects Asians at all costs. Where is that same fucking law to be signed into, the, into law when it comes to brown, black and brown people? Because what you're doing is, President Biden and Kamala Harris, what you're doing is you're saying that black and brown people will continue to be disposable. That's the- That's why we- that's why we got to vote and we got to make sure our voices are heard, Tyrese. And it matters when we speak up and speak truth to power, when we speak what's on our heart, we will be heard. But first, you got to have the courage. OK, so a lot of people chimed in on this and they had a lot of choice words for Tyrese. I wish I could play for you the clip that I want to directly reference, which was one by Roland Martin. But Roland Martin is so petty. He is so petty that if I play this clip, he would strike my channel. That's how petty he is. So I can't take that chance. But anyway, he called Tyrese dumb. The Tyrese didn't know what he was talking about. The Asian hate crime bill was not for Asians. Though that's what people called it. That it really was for everybody. Roll is wrong. He's wrong. But let's put it in the context and go a little bit in more in depth because he's been lying to his audience and there's nothing worse than a person that lies to his audience using a bit of truth but then caking over the entire rest of it in order to make a point that defends the Democratic Party. Because see, Roland Martin is not in it for black people. I know we got black people that are delusional. They think Roland Martin has black people's best interests at heart. Roland Martin has Roland Martin's best interests in the interest of the Democratic Party at heart. He's a team player. That's all he is. Realize your broke ass is not on his team. 2021, the COVID Hate Crimes Act of 2021. People called it the Asian Hate Crime Bill because that was the purpose that was stated for the creation of the bill. Once again, we talked the other day about narratives. We talked about the impetus that a president 
can put on an issue and make that issue central. You can use the bully pulpit. You can use legislation. You can use executive orders to drive public, to drive legislation. And that's what was done. As Tyrese pointed out correctly, there were a small spike. If you black, it was a blip. It was a blip if you black because the spike that they're referring to seemed like a lot of Asian hate crimes that were being perpetrated upon the Asian community, but that's only because they didn't get a lot of hate crimes to begin with. So it looked big to them. I mean, if you go from 10 to, to 100, that's a big jump. But if you're already at like 500 or 600, which is where black people usually are, then, you know, it's like, okay, 10 more or 100 more is just, takes us to 600. They ain't crazy. So they were like, we can't let this thing get out of control. And also, it was also about sending a message that Trump is horrible because they could, they attributed the rise in Asian attacks to Donald Trump. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? There are reports of dozens of incidents of bi bias against Chinese Americans in this country. Your own aide, Secretary Azar, says he does not use this term. He says ethnicity does not cause the virus. Why do you keep using this? A lot of it comes say from it's China. racist. It's not racist at all. No, not at all. It comes from China. That's why. It comes from China. I and want to be accurate. About yeah, please, in John. This please. Behind you. Are uh, you I have a great. I have great love uh, for all of the people from our country. But uh, as you know, China tried to say at one point, maybe they stopped now, that it was caused by American soldiers. That can't happen. It's not going to happen. Not as long as I'm president. Uh, it comes from China. They said, oh, it's got to do with Donald Trump because Donald Trump made, made comments about the origination of COVID-19 by speculating that it was um, derived in China. Now, we know that that's been the official, that's been the official narrative since then. But at the time, they were like, no, that's not true. And then Trump, I remember he made a, he made a joke where he called it the Kung Flu. What if you could have seen outside or if you could have heard the reports, the reports, oh, it's COVID, it's this, I've gotten, it's, by the way, it's a disease without question, has more names than any disease in history. I can name Kung Flu, I can name 19 different versions of names. Many call it a virus, which it is. Many call it a flu. What difference? I think we have 19 or 20 versions of the name. Last July, President Trump declared himself the least racist person there is anywhere in the world. Why does he use racist phrases like the Kung Flu? Well, the president doesn't. The, what the president does do is point to the fact that the origin of the virus is China. It's a fair thing to point out as China tries to ridiculously rewrite history, ridiculously blame the coronavirus on American soldiers. This is what China's trying to do. And what President Trump is saying, no China, I will label this virus for its place of origin. That's what he's saying by using the racist phrase Kung Flu? He is linking it to its place of origin. What does he have to and say to uh, uh, Asian Americans who are deeply offended and worry that his use will lead to further attacks of discrimination? So the president has said very clearly, it's important that we totally protect our Asian community in the U.S. and all around the world. They're amazing people and the spreading of the virus is not their fault in any way, shape, or form. They're working closely with us to get rid of it. We will prevail together. It's very important. So it's not a discussion about Asian Americans, who the president values and prizes as citizens of this great country. It is an indictment of China for letting this virus get here. And I would you just call it the in detail for you in an email. Though, Kayla, yes, you've got to admit that. It is not the same thing as calling it the Yes, the president never regrets putting the onus back on China, pointing out that China is responsible for this, and in the process, standing up for U.S. troops who are being blamed by China in a campaign of misinformation. And what liberal media was trying to say, and what the Democrats were trying to say, which is almost the same thing, I mean, come on. The folks at the MSDNC, I mean the MSNBC, they pretty much were just labeling this as a bill that needed to be created because Trump put all these Asian people's lives in jeopardy. 
It was in response to the increase of hate crimes and violence against Asian Americans during the COVID-19 pandemic. It aims to expedite the review of hate crimes and make the reporting process easier at the local, state, and federal levels. It also provides guidance for law enforcement to establish online reporting and ensure accessibility to hate crime reporting resources. So that was the Hate Crime Act of 2021. Why would we have black Americans chastising another black man for saying we deserve a hate crime bill for us? I think it's because if they start saying that black people are uniquely, have been uniquely the recipients of hate, that we need to create a bill just for black Americans, that that would bolster the claims for reparations. And they don't want to do that. And Mark Lamar here don't want to do that. And Roland Martin don't want to do that. And all the other ones coming at Tyrese for bringing this up don't want that to happen because their bosses don't want it to happen. It's the same thing happening in California right now where all the defenders, the black congressional black, California congressional black caucus is defending Gavin Newsom. You stand back there, boss. I got this. We ain't going to run this bill right now. It's, gonna, it's not good for us. We're going to fix it and do better. That's right, boss. That's right. That's right. We're going to do that. Leave him alone. They're defending Gavin Newsom. The Asian, the anti-Asian hate crime bill. When people like Roland, just to, just to the historical context is there for one reason why, but the Asian hate crime bill was so much a focus of Asians Beyond what Roland said, don't listen to Roland. Roland's Roland's a bold-faced liar, and he's trying to switch the narrative. There were 75 different Asian-American and LGBT groups that work with Asian-American communities that protested the signing of the bill because they said this bill is going to do nothing but make us more divided with our brothers and sisters, our black brothers and sisters, our Latino brothers and sisters, and it's not going to make us more safe. We don't want more division. And this bill ain't going to do nothing but make us more divided. Why would you want to give us a bill? Give one to the blacks. That was the Asian groups themselves. I said it then. I'm saying it again. See, we don't have enough. This platform, and I, this platform is just not big enough. I've covered this before. You didn't hear about it. You should have heard about it. You should know that there were Asian organizations, but the sole stipulation of helping Asian people, because those, those groups exist, all other groups, Latino Americans, Asian Americans, Jewish Americans, indigenous folks, all other groups have organizations that advocate for themselves and fight for them, okay? It's not just black groups. We got so many silos, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what the other what other folks are doing. Back when Joe Biden, back when they signed that bill, the Asian, the the, the COVID nineteen. President Biden today signing a bill to combat the growing number of hate incidents against Asian Americans. Lester, there are few bipartisan moments in Washington, but this was one of them. President Biden signing legislation that aims to combat the recent rise in hate crimes, particularly against Asian Americans. The bill improves hate crime tracking and bolsters support for state and local officials. The president called hatred and racism the ugly poison that has long haunted our nation. It's worth noting this was one of the first large indoor gatherings of the Biden administration, almost everyone without a mask. Yeah. To help Asians who have spiked during COVID-19 in the number of hate crimes. Um, they didn't even want that bill done. They acknowledged themselves that it looked horrible, considering the legacy of lynching to black people, the legacy of hate crimes committed against black Americans. They weren't advocating for that bill. Why are so many black Americans advocating for a separate bill for black Americans? So one was the historical con context of us being the predominant number of people that have been recipients of hate crimes. Sorry, I don't want to win that. I don't want to win that. We don't want to win that as a group, I'm pretty sure. It is what it is. The house that gets burned down is the house that needs to be rebuilt. 
current disparities. Statistics show African Americans continue to be disproportionately targeted for hate crimes. So not just historically, today. It's still happening. We still are the biggest recipients of hate crimes. Perceived gaps in current laws. Advocates may believe existing hate crime laws don't ad adequately cover claims, certain types of basis or bias incidents against African Americans. Some feel that the laws don't go far enough. Guys, those laws are written very specifically. They cover very specific issues. They had to create different addendums to, to include orientation, for instance. Every step of the way, they had to make these laws, but they didn't say black as if white people were being beat up when they went into vote. No, they weren't, but they didn't want to admit it was black people. Symbolism and recognition. A specific act could be seen as an important symbolic acknowledgement of the unique challenging faced by African-Americans. Once again, Roland and, and Roland and Mark Lamont Hill sound horrible on this, and this is, it's very troubling that those brothers, and I've disagreed, particularly with Roland on a number of issues, guys, but it's very, it's, it's disgustingly, um, it's shameful that these brothers will resort to this. Black people deserve, if we deserve Harriet Tubman on a $50 bill, damn it, we deserve a damn anti-hate crime bill. If we deserve the Juneteenth I think we deserve to stay alive more than we deserve the Juneteenth, a holiday we already had. We already celebrated it. You got the Juneteenth check? No. Well, you know what? We'll take a bill that says, leave black people alone. All the stupid symbolism they give us, hip-hop day, other garbage. What we ask for, we can't get. So they come up with superflu superfluous nonsense, go goofy, goofy Unimportant. Shinola. Them wearing Kinsey cloth. Taking the knee for George Floyd. I don't know what we get for that. What, does that help us? No, what, what, what we would prefer is an anti-lynching bill for black people. A hate crime bill specifically for black Americans. Instead of defending the Democratic Party, how about you focus on a bill that says the anti Black Hate Crime Act. How about that? Instead of championing or trying to tear down Tyrese and other, anyone who's championing for the most, the most impaired, the most, the most uh, victimized group in America. Not because it's great. Not because we want to win. This is not something to win. This is not the Olympics of who has the most suffering. This is just the numbers. Okay? That's all this is. Advocate for that next time, brothers. My brothers.